Hello Pokemon fans, my name is Ashenmore, and you are in for a real treat this time. Over the holidays I applied for a few very competitive leagues and I managed to get in one, the Ultimate Battle League or the UBL. This is a Wi-Fi league which I have not done in a very long time and I've never uploaded videos for Wi-Fi because I've never had a capture card to do so, so it should be an adventure. And this is a D-League or a developmental league, so this is the main league that's going on over there, but it's still a pretty big deal, and I'm going to treat it as such. Hopefully I'm going to be able to bring you some quality videos and not embarrass myself. That's the goal, right? You may also notice we have a new team for the new year, and at least for the foreseeable future, we will be playing as the Appalachian Thunder, which I chose based on Thundee being one of my favorite mons and having just moved to the mountains. But enough of that, you are here to see the team that I've drafted for this league, so let's get right into it. I was 5th out of 10 in this draft, so smack in the center. And I had my heart set on two particular Pokemon, the first being Mew, but Mew didn't make it past pick 4 unfortunately, so I opted to go for Mew number 2, which is Jirachi. Certainly not a bad way to start out, Jirachi kind of fills any role that I want it to. It gets me rocks, it gets me wish passing, it has my favorite move in the game which is Doom Desire and I really hope to pull some shenanigans with that at some point this season. And of course the ever important hacks as a win condition kind of thing going on there. Uh, really love this Pokemon. It can do mostly everything, not quite as much as Mew can obviously, but it's still a force to be reckoned with. Uh, obviously the, the way to make it the most effective is to be able to cover all the roles that it can do so you can bring it as a flex pick pretty much every week. That makes it very difficult for your opponent to adequately prep for it. Unfortunately my second round pick to go with Chirachi was Sniped and that would have been Hydreigon. The wheel pick decided to take it with Victini so he was going with more or less the same type coverage strategy that I was. So unfortunately, Hydrogen not available, so I just went ahead and I took the third pick that I had originally wanted in Zeriora. Besides just being something new and exciting to use, he's a fast electric type, which is something you absolutely have to have in the format, at least I think so. And with Volt Switch on Zeriora and U-Turn on Jirachi, we're already building an effective momentum core, and we're going to add to that with a couple of mons later on in the draft. The Zeriora pick also gets us knockoff. It gets us boosting offensive setup on both sides of the spectrum with Calm Mind and Bulk Up, and overall, it's just a great mon to have. And if I wanted it, I had to have it now before the draft went back up to the Celesteela team at the top, then they would get two picks, and I guarantee they would have taken this because this mon is so good with Celesteela. The third pick was more of a target of opportunity than anything else, and that's going to be Tapu Fini. So we've already got some speed, we've already got some setup, some utility, but without that Hydreigon pick that we wanted second, we lack switch-ins to cover for Jirachi and Zeriora, as well as a reliable defogger, and we also need to check to ground, dark, and fire types that I might have trouble with with what I already have, and Finny can do all of that for us. On top of that, Misty Terrain has that extra benefit of preventing status effects, so we can use that to cover for strong physical sweepers later on, or even just to prevent our defensive pivots from getting toxic. On top of Finny being able to absorb those fire and dark moves for Jirachi, we have the Volt Absorb on Zeriora, and of course Jirachi being a Steel type allows all of Finny's weaknesses to be covered, so it fit really well in right here. Unfortunately, I did snipe this Finny off of the coach that had picked Zygarde. My other idea, if I didn't get Mew or Jirachi, was to run Zygarde Finny to begin with, so a little sorry about that, but it's really the only thing I could use in this situation to give me what I needed. The only other option I considered at this point was Tapu Bulu instead of the Tapu Fini, but I opted not to go with that specifically so I'd have access to that Defogger who's not weak to rocks, and so that we'd have an effective high tier check to fire types. To go with Tapu Fini as one of my defensive pivots to support Jirachi and Zeriora, my fourth pick was Crobat. Now Crobat's also really fast, that's base 130 speed, we've already got the Zeriora at base 143, so we have some insane speed going on right here. Add to that that Crobat gets U-Turn, and it resists the ground type attacks that are going to hit both Jirachi and Zeriora, and it's a natural fit onto the team right there. Crobat can be deceptively tanky, it gets us another access to Defog if we really needed another poison resistance to cover for the Finny. We've got Zeriora to cover electric type moves that would go after it. We can run it offensively, we can run it defensively, it's whatever we want to do with Crobat, 
It's just incredibly flexible and it fits perfectly into this team that we've built right here. Should I have fourth picked it? Possibly not. I did get sniped out of a lot of things later on in the draft that I might have been able to take had I left the Crobat off for another pick. But I have seen Crobat taken early before, especially for people who are trying to get that speedy pivot. So I absolutely do not regret taking it here. Our fifth pick was also a target of opportunity much like Tapu Fini was. It's something I was looking at the list and then I realized, wait, this is available? And it was Mega Kangaskhan. At this point, half of the teams had picked a Mega. There were several that hadn't. And I was trying to figure out what were they going to pick so that I could figure out if my Mega pick could wait until later. And I realized Mega Kangaskhan would fit pretty well in those teams and I see it banned in a lot of the leagues that I'm in. Now obviously the move Seismic Toss on it is a no-go, but everything else is still intact, including Power Up Punch. One of the things that my team lacks at this point is a dedicated breaker. Most of the time it's going to be run physical, but it can also be run special. It has a respectable special attack, basically base 125 if you include its ability. We're also getting access to stab fake out priority and sucker punch priority, so we're kind of covering that angle as well with this pick. On top of that, we have the Finny Misty Terrain to protect it from burns, and then Finny and Crobat both resist fighting, which is the only thing that it's actually weak to. So this thing can be a bulky guy just sitting there. Uh, it can wish pass, it can do all sorts of things for me, but really in this role, it's mostly going to be a dedicated breaker, which we have plenty of protection for. Now at this point, I was really looking at hazards, right? Jirachi, it does have stealth rocks, but I don't have access to spikes, I don't have access to toxic spikes, uh, no webs, no, nothing like that. So my thought was that the next Pokemon I wanted to get was Roserade, but that didn't really pan out. My sixth pick actually ended up being Salamence. You may think, why Salamence? Well, it's going to give me another ground immunity, right? But it's also in tier 2, which I think is a little bit undercosted for Salamence. So as a dragon type, which we're going to get eventually, uh, why not go ahead and pick it right here? We have access to Intimidate, we have access to Dragon Dance, uh, we have access to Moxie, so we can Scarf Moxie if we want to. Again, physical, special, uh, multi-faceted offense. You can sort of see a trend here. Uh, if you know anything about my teams that I've been running lately, I've really been trending towards very balance-oriented teams where it's very difficult to predict exactly what kind of set that I might bring on each Pokemon. Salamence is also an excellent abuser of Z-Crystals, so we're also going to be running that as one of our two Z-Pokemon. Also, because that's really the only way it's going to get a flying stab is Supersonic Sky Strike. But I can tell you, that's not what we're going to run all the time. Now, is it necessarily the best dragon to pair with Finny? No. At this point in the draft, eight of the teams besides me had already chosen a dragon. The very last team was very ground weak and they didn't have a dragon yet. So I thought maybe they might take Mence right here. So I just decided, hey, why not grab it uh, while I still have the opportunity since I'm looking into it. One thing people don't think much about when they think Salamence is that it can be in a tanky role as well. So you can run uh, Wish on it, so that gives us technically Wish Passing on not only Jirachi, but also on Mega Kangaskhan and Salamence. So they can come in their offensive breaker roles, or they can come as bulky support options, whatever we happen to need. After we took Salamence, I was thinking about what I needed next. I needed some more defenses and I needed some more special offense. I had my eye on a couple of different mons that got picked up, so I decided to opt for a defensive pick next, or a sort of defensive pick, and so I ended up taking Scrafty out of Tier 4. Now, Scrafty gets me a couple of different things that I lack at this point. It has base 115 defenses, so it's a great switch in to a lot of different attacks we're going to be taking. Because we have those two flying types, we have those rock weaknesses, and yes, Jirachi is a rock switch in, but why not have a fighting type that can do the same thing? Once again, you've got Moxie, you've got Intimidate, you've got different ways for it to sweep. You've got Dragon Dance. It's also a dark type, and that's something I also really wanted to get because I missed it with that Hydreigon. And really, it's just an awesomely designed Mon. I've got a great nickname, already thought up for it. It's going to be great. I just really, really wanted to play this thing. I found an excuse to take it, so why not? It is sad that it doesn't have Pursuit and it doesn't have Sucker Punch, but it does have Fake Out, so we've kind of got like Fake Out the team going on here with Zeriora, Mega Kangaskhan, and now Scrafty. Now, still thinking in kind of the more defensive mindset, the other Pokemon I decided to take out of Tier 4 at this point in time was Ferretris. 
Now, why Fretress? Well, we don't have access to a lot of hazards. Currently, still, we've only got the Jirachi for Stealth Rocks. I considered briefly taking Excelgor out of Tier 4, but I've already got a base 143 and a base 130. Do I really want that Excelgor at this point? That gives me three super, super fast Mons. Not that there's anything wrong with that speed, but I felt like if I had all that speed on my team, I'd probably be lacking in something else. So why not go ahead, just have that deep, another defensive pivot that has access to all three of the major hazards. And on top of that, Rapid Spin. Now we could actually make a game plan around hazard stacking. And if you include all the access to fake out that we've got, it becomes very, very easy to chip teams with toxic spikes, even one layer. Also, at this point, most of my mons with Volt Switch or U-Turn are very, very fast. I don't have any slow Volt Switches, which is something that Ferretris is going to give us. So now on top of that fast momentum, now we have slow momentum that can help us bring in things like the Zeriora, like the Salamence to set up. Does it double up on our Steel types? Sure. But I feel like at this point in time, I have enough fire resistance to actually warrant taking this thing. I'm not personally a huge fan of Ferretris, but it does what I need it to do in this situation, so we'll see how it plays out for us. At this point, we have almost all of the tools that we really need to succeed. The only thing that I think we're lacking is some natively strong special attackers. And at this point in the draft, all I had left were two tier 5s and a tier 3. Now, I would have considered at this point in the draft something like Primarina out of tier 3, but obviously that completely mirrors Tapu Fini. And a lot of the strong special attackers in Tier 3 either mirrored types that we already had or had been taken at this point in time. So, Tier 5, best special attacker I could think of down there, Miss Magius. Now, obviously, base 105 special attack, that's nothing to write home about. Most of my mixed sweepers have more than that already. However, it has an expansive move pool. It has one of the best stab types that you can have in the game, which is Ghost. Very few people have a lot of Pokemon on their team that can resist Ghost. On top of that, now we have access to things like Trick. We have something that can be used for Will-O-Wisp, Destiny Bond, a lot of those Ghost type utility moves. Now we have all of those in our arsenal as well. On top of that, this is a Levitate Mon, so that gives us another immunity to grounds. That sits us at three immunities to help us protect that Jirachi and the Zeriora. One of my thoughts here when it came to special attack and the reason why I didn't focus on it too much earlier on in the draft is because a lot of the stuff that I picked has access to Calm Mind already. So Jirachi, Diriora, Tapu Fini, all are potential Calm Mind boosters. So I figured, hey, you know, that's probably enough. With Miss Magius, it can boost its special attack specifically a lot higher. And so that's kind of what we're taking this for, the utility and then the fact that it's a special attacker. And as a special attacker, Miss Magius is going to be our second Z Mon. So we actually wasted a little bit of points as far as Z Captains go, but I think Salamence and Miss Magius, two really good Mons to be able to put a Z Crystal on. There's also a lot of shenanigans you can pull with all the support moves on Miss Magius with Z Crystals, and I hope to get to show you guys some of that stuff as the season goes on. Now at this point, last two picks are coming up. I'm looking at my team, I'm trying to decide what do I need. I probably still need something with a little bit higher than base 110 special attack, but I'm not going to find that in tier 5 now. The other big thing I need is another electric resistance. I have the immunity off Zeriora, but I have nothing else that actually resists electric type attacks. So why not go ahead, go for a classic ground type, and get Mudsdale. Mudsdale is stupid good. Now obviously, its defense with stamina is what stands out about it, but it also has the highest special defense out of any ground type that was available, and I also wanted that. On top of that, this thing, even though it's really, really slow, it can easily survive hits, it can dish out some brutal damage, you've got counter shenanigans, it gives me a third stealth rocker, which is always something that's great to have, and there's not much more to be said about it than that. For the very last Mon, our 11th pick, our last tier 3, I agonized over this decision for quite some time because we're still stuck on that special attacker and everything else that I had wanted out of that tier was gone. Only one single thing stood out to me as something that should be taken for this team. And so I ended up with Kyurem. I know, I can already hear you saying, Double Dragon, what does it mean? It could mean that I'm terrible, but hear me out. Kyurem is a very beefy boy. He gets me 
solid ice stab, a base 130 special attack, a not terrible speed tier. He just sits, he sub roosts in front of your face all day and then shoots off ice beams. That's all he really needs to do. As a specially offensive threat, there really isn't almost anything better in tier three that could have gone on this team. Is it ideal? No, but it will work. At least I think it will work. Now, could I bring Salamence and Kurum together one week? Sure. For the most part though, I could just bring them separate weeks. So sometimes I'll have Salamence as a threat, sometimes I might have Kurum as a threat, and it'll be up to my opponents to try to figure out which one I'm actually gonna bring. They fulfill very different roles. Salamence is more of a setup sweeper, Kurum is more of that brawler kind of Pokemon, and that is really what I needed here. And there you have it. That is going to be Appalachian Thunder's roster for the UBL D-League Season 1. I don't think it's the best team that I've ever put together, but it does have all of the pieces that it needs to succeed, and I think I can pilot it to success. So we'll see what happens in weeks one and two. I'm at least going to play it like this for the first two weeks before I make any sort of adjustments. This should give me enough time doing team building to see exactly what the team needs. And I think even if I win those two games, I probably still would want to make a couple of changes. But I'll keep those to myself for now. Whenever I do make those changes, I'll be sure to let you guys know in another video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're as excited to watch this season as I am to actually play it. If you have thoughts about the team, whether they're good, whether they're bad, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I'm looking for feedback. If you like something about the video, let me know. If you don't like something about the video, let me know. I can't change anything to make it better if I don't know what you all like. So that's it for me. Leave a like, possibly subscribe, and I'll see you all next time in my week one battle.